is Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone, a small country in West Africa, surrounded by Guinea and Liberia. Sierra Leone that comes to people's public consciousness because of the wars of the 1990s and the early 2000s and blood diamonds. But there's more to Sierra Leone than that. Here, quick look at Sierra Leone. Now the capital of Sierra Leone is Freetown and like a lot of African cities and indeed a lot of cities all around the world, there's a lot of hustle and bustle, a lot of noise, a lot of traffic zooming to and fro and lots of people crowding markets trying to get their daily essentials. Sierra Leone gets its name because a mountain off in the distance when you see it from the ocean apparently resembles a lion. That's Sierra Leone lion. Freetown gets its name from the fact that when slaves were allowed to be liberated, they first came here and were allowed to be free. Let's talk more about slaves for a second. About 45 minutes boat ride up the river from downtown Freetown, you get to Bunce Island. From 1670 until 1807, Bunce Island was a trading port and a lot of its trade was slaves. It's estimated about 30,000 African slaves passed through Bunce Island on their way to the Americas and the West Indies. So you might not like some of China's foreign policy. You might even have swallowed the line that China is raping and pillaging Africa in the same way that Europe raped and pillaged Africa. No matter how much the Chinese are tying people up in trade contracts and golden handcuffs, they're not doing this. I have not seen an international slave trading port anywhere in Africa set up by the Chinese. And remember, as we head towards what appears to be an inevitable conflict between the West and China over Taiwan, just remember this, African countries voted for UN Resolution 2758 in 1971 that recognised the People's Republic of China as the official government of China, replacing the nationalist Chiang Kai-shek representatives in Taiwan. And they did that without changing the borders of internationally recognised China. Internationally recognised China, according to international law, love it or hate it, includes Taiwan. Human habitation can be marked here going back at least 2,500 years with the Limba tribe being the first recognized people here on the edge of the Malian empire as it then was. And certainly there was intra-African slave trading before the arrival of the Europeans. So in the 1700s, there was a colony set up in Nova Scotia for the black loyalists who fought on the side of the crown in the US Revolutionary War. It was decided to try and set up a colony for freed black slaves, the black loyalists, back in Africa. So in 1792, a decision was made to attempt a colony here in Freetown. And this is where Sierra Leone has a complicated relationship with slavery because there was the pre-European intra-African slave trade. There was the massive acceleration in the trade of human beings through the transatlantic slave trade. But here in Freetown, it was also one of the sites of an attempt to resettle former slaves. So in 1792, a group of first colonialists from the Black Loyalists arrived in what is now modern Freetown, cleared land all the way to a large cotton tree and said a prayer, let me take you to that cotton tree. So in 1792, underneath that cotton tree, that is where the freed slaves came to pray after founding Freetown. The 1990s and early 2000s saw a very brutal civil war in Sierra Leone and in neighbouring Liberia. During the brutal wars, of course, the UN and NGOs were here. And strangely enough, an enormous amount of sexual abuse done by UN workers and NGOs. Most famously, and you'll need to Google this, a series of scandals called the Food for Sex Scandals, where families were only allowed into refugee camps if they handed over one of their children 
for sexual favours. I know this for a fact because I was Head of Early Warning and Emergency Preparedness for the UN High Commission for Refugees during part of the time and saw our internal documents. And our lack of action is what is one of the things that inspired me to A, leave the UN, and B, set up here their cries to counter the sexual abuse of the UN. So what I'm doing in Sierra Leone now is working with or identifying some good pastoral care groups that deal with victims of abuse and ascertaining whether some would like to participate in the program similar to the one in the Philippines where we take DNA from children born from aid worker abuse and try and track the fathers. Watch this space and if you're a UN worker or an NGO worker or a former UN worker or former NGO worker and you fathered a child in Sierra Leone, I'm coming for you. But part of the recovery for Sierra Leone post-conflict is to begin to look after some of their nature and wildlife. So I've come here to the outskirts of Freetown to the Takaguma chimpanzee sanctuary to have a look at some work in protection of chimpanzees. Now chimpanzees are not monkeys. If you doubt that, ask yourself this question. Do chimpanzees have tails? Chimpanzees are primates and they're one of the four main species of primates. Great apes, chimpanzees, pygmy chimpanzees and us. In fact, we share 98.4% of our DNA with chimpanzees, making them our closest genetic relatives. Chimpanzees, like human beings, live in social groups still dominated by the male hierarchy. The males will have two or three supporting senior males within their group. The groups live a lot like human beings live in a very strong social construct. They use tools, for example, to catch termites. They've been known to dance and to use hollow logs as drums. There's even some thought that they use some plants for medicinal purposes. And their life cycle is very similar. A mother will bear a baby in her womb for about eight months and then it's born. It lives and drinks breast milk until about two or three. Then at the age of 13, it starts to reach adult maturity, although still growing, and females start to breed. And the chimpanzee life expectancy can be around about 50 years. I suppose exactly that of human beings before the advent of modern medicine. Here in the Takaguma Chimp Sanctuary, there used to be a dominant male nicknamed Bruno, but Bruno organized and gathered part of his troop together and launched an escape and he's occasionally seen around Freetown. There are about 5,000 chimpanzees left in the wild and the greatest threats to them as they're an endangered species of habitat loss, poaching for meat, bush meats, souvenir taking or the illegal wildlife trade for people who like one in their uh, home and disease, hence why we're wearing the mask. What they're doing is they're taking orphaned chimpanzees and slowly educating them for release back into the wild so they start in small enclosures and get gradually bigger until they remain in one large eight acre enclosure in their social groups ready for reintroduction into safe places in Sierra Leone where the local communities have been brought on board for the release, for the protection of the chimpanzees. So when they're released, they're not hunted again. By the way, when you visit Takagumi here, you can also take some really rudimentary lessons in how to speak chimpanzee. Yep, they vocalize.